All right, so welcome back from the previous video. If you haven't watched the previous video, go back and watch that video because this is video two of a series of videos that we're going to be doing to create a 2D game in Unity. So now what we want to be able to do is uh, look at some of the major concepts in Unity, and that's adding assets. I mean, that's basically everything in Unity. So what we want to first learn how to do is import a package. Now, what's a package? Well, a package is um, a set of objects and images and audio files and all sorts of things that you'll be using to create your game with. Many times we'll create our own packages and other times we'll just purchase a package or have someone else create it for us and we'll import it, especially when we're working as a team. Someone might be working on a different uh, version of the same game, but you guys are using the same package. And then you, you would just uh, share that package between one another. So let's go ahead and look at uh, importing a standard package. Right now you can tell when we go to the projects view there is no package here. And basically a package is just a file structure. When you first start up Unity you're gonna get this assets folder here. And the folder structure is just like any other folder structure. This is nothing really special. I mean if I were to right click on this folder and then if I were to go here to show an explorer basically that's exactly what it is. A folder structure. So if I were to come here and I were to right click here and then I were to go create and folder. So I'm right clicking in there and creating this brand new folder here. And then uh, what you'll notice is that in this file structure here, I can also do something like this, show an explorer. And then what you'll see here inside of my Unity's project, you'll see this new folder that was created. And vice versa, if I were to go here, new folder, create a, a new folder number two inside of here. Let me just uh, rename that. And then I were to go here and click on there, you'll see that folder was created here also. So you can create the folder here or inside of the um, the the, win the Windows Explorer window. Um, so Either way, you're creating a package or you're creating a folder. Now, I'm using package and folder interchangeably, but there is a huge difference uh, later on. So for right now, just understand that's what I mean when I mean when I say package sometimes in this intro stage. So I'm going to click on that folder and hit delete, and then I'll get this little menu up there to delete it because I don't want empty folders here. And I'm going to do the same thing for this folder here, select it and click on delete. And now I'm back to my original settings. So now what I want to do is go ahead and import some assets that uh, Unity automatically has there for you so that it can get our game up and going. And here, here's the main thing. You got to understand, a game engine is not designed for you to have to do everything. It's designed for you to get an idea out. It's not designed for you to necessarily have to learn how to code your own graphics and all this other stuff. You know, if you want to do that, you know, that's more of a an academic thing where you're trying to learn more about computer science. You're trying to learn more about programming. This is you are trying to get something out so other people can play or that you can sell. And that's why you have to understand. I know some of you out there really want to do everything yourself. Then Unity is not the thing for you. Then you need to go look at some of my C++, my C Sharp, my Java, and my JavaScript, and my HTML5 uh, videos where you want to do everything for yourself. And even HTML5, you're going to have um, frameworks out there. You're going to have libraries out there, game engines out there that's directly connected to HTML5, JavaScript to get you to get up faster running so that way you don't you're not necessarily coding your own physics coding your own light you know I mean it would be just ridiculous uh, to even think about doing that if you're trying to make this sort of game like this sort of 2d slash 3d kind of game on your own again academically that's great you can go ahead and pursue that you will learn a lot but if you really want to just get something out you have an idea you're working as a team and you all need to work in one unit uh, you're going to want to use something like unity and you can't be ashamed to say i use some of their assets or i use some of their you know um some of the products that they 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 share with you along with the stuff that you have where where you can make it um you know an original idea so with that said we're going to go ahead and learn how to import some assets so I'm going to go here up to the assets menu and then I'm going to go to import package because we're doing a 2D game I want to import the 2D package when I do that it's going to take a little a few minutes uh, well maybe less than that 
and then it's going to open up this import unity package dialog now with this dialog you can scroll up and down and choose what you want and what you don't want but because we're just beginning and we may or may not use all of this we're going to go ahead and click on import when it does that it's going to import all of the folders and all of the assets related to the 2d package that unity provides for you and as you can see Unity has no idea of what you want in the beginning, so it just gives you a blank, you know, a blank canvas to work with. And that blank canvas has pretty much everything you need to start from scratch to be able to create your game. On the other hand, if you want to start with some assets, you can go ahead and import this 2D assets. Now, inside of here, you'll see that it created this folder, this standard, I'm going to scroll this out a little bit, it says standard assets inside of standard assets you have this 2d folder here you have animations physics materials you have a lot of different things you have prefabs and we'll talk about prefabs in a second and we have sprites and scripts all kinds of stuff here now the cool thing about this is that if i go to my prefabs folder all of these things here are things i can drag and replicate inside of my scene without causing any sort of memory problems. Meaning a prefab is um, an instance of the real object. It's not actually the real object. So it allows you to be able to add multiple objects in the scene without adding to uh, the workload for the, for the system to have to do. So let's look how easy it is for us to position something in our scene. If I were to go here and inside this prefab, you'll see this character that they let you use. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on that character and drag it into my scene. I can position anything in the scene that way once I position something in the scene. Now, this character is already set up. It already has things connected to it. And what you'll see here on the left-hand side, you'll see that the character Robot Boy is here. That's the name of it. And you see this little arrow, meaning there are things connected to it. We'll talk about that later. So over here to the right, you'll see this inspector, which has all the parameters connected to this character here. With that being said, I can drag this character left and right using these arrow keys. And remember our orbiting and scrolling. We talked about that in the first uh, video. So I can orbit around it. I can move it around. Now, this is a 2D character. So this is why it's so flat. Within this same scene, uh, that's not, uh, you know, I can add something that's not in my assets by going here to game object and I can go ahead and create myself a 2D object like a cube. If I create that cube, it's going to go to world center and I can go ahead and resize this cube. As you can see, I have the cube over here, over here to the right. I'm able to change the in information about it. So whatever I click, the information over here in the inspector will change to whatever I currently have selected. So whenever you have something like a 2D cube or 3D uh, sprite selected, what you want to be able to do is edit it. And there's a couple of ways we can do that by resizing, transforming, scaling, that sort of stuff, adding colliders to it. And all of that will happen over here in the inspector. So let's say if I select this, uh, this cube, I come over here inside the scale. I can drag this particular scale. As you can see, I'm scaling it in one direction. And then I can scale it in another direction. I can scale it in the Z direction. If I screw up and it, I get some sort of weird thing like this and I didn't really want that, I can always go in here and change the numbering by actually typing in the number that I want directly. Another way for me to scale is inside of the viewport. So when I want to scale, there's three keys uh, I can focus on, but the scale key would be the R. So when I click on R, I can then scale it by using these boxes here in both directions and this is more of a free form scale and if I hit W I can then transform it to where I want if I wanted to rotate this I'll hit the E key and then I can rotate it anywhere I want we're just going to control Z on that so now as you can see we have something in our scene and by nature there's gravity connected to everything um, but only things that have a um, let's say a certain um, 
component attached to it will be affected by the gravity. Let's look at what I mean by that. So right now I have this in the scene and I have this character in the scene. If I go to up here inside of my scene and I click on this 2D button, you'll see now I'm in 2D mode. So if I hit play, he falls through and I'm not in 2D mode. Well, why is that? Well, because our camera itself, so even though I'm in 2D mode, I'm gonna click out of 2D mode. You'll see where our camera is located. Our camera is located right here and you'll see these little lines. It shows you where the camera is pointed. If I wanted this camera to be on the side of this character, what I would have to do is start moving the camera and as I start moving the camera over here to the right, you'll see this camera preview. And I can rotate that camera to where I want. And as I rotate it, you'll still see this camera preview. I'm going to go up. And you want to do this in one plane at a time. Don't try to overdo it. Just make sure you set it up a little bit at a time. So now you see this here. And if I were to take this character and if I were to rotate him and then click on my camera, you'll see you can now see the full character over here in this preview, but you can't see him here. So I'll have to rotate where the camera is to be able to see this character. And if I hit play now, you'll see it in the camera view, but he falls through. So this tells us that even though there's uh, gravity attached to this guy, he doesn't seem to be affected by, I mean, the, well, the cube doesn't seem to be affected by gravity and it doesn't seem to be able to stop him from falling because a cube or anything else that's brought into a scene must get so certain colliders and certain uh, elements attached to it, rigid bodies attached to it for it to be uh, interacting with other objects. So the way we add things to objects uh, inside of the game scene is number one, we have to select it. So now you can see it selected because it has that orange glow around it or that orange outline. Then you come over here to the inspector and then you say add component. When you do that, you can go ahead and add yourself a rigid body. I'm going to type rigid up here. And then I can go ahead and click rigid body. And now you can see over here it has a rigid body attached to it. Now when I hit run, you'll see that everything falls. Why? Because a rigid body is not really something that's going to stand still. And so he has a rigid body, he has a rigid body. I hit play and every guy, every, everybody falls. So when we're talking about something where you want to just stand still, we're not talking about rigid bodies. All we want to do is add a collider to this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now remove this rigid body by going remove component. I'm going to add another component and I'm going to type collider. And I'm going to hit a 2D box collider. I can't add the 2D box collider because it already has a box collider here. So let's remove this one. So I'm going to remove this component. And then I'm going to add myself a 2D box collider. Box collider 2D. And I'm just leave all the settings the same. So now when I run it, you can see that my character is now... <laughs> he falls... Because I, I changed his position, so he's moving all crazy. Now, the thing about this character is it's all set up for us. Um, it already has the control keys and everything like that on there. So this is probably the character we could use, but I think later on we're going to make our own character. And we can actually base the character off of this character, which would make things a lot easier for us. So right now we have everything set up here. We have a 2D object in here. We have a 3D object reacting to the 2D object. And we've been able to add some stuff to our scene. So in the next video, I think what we're going to end up doing... We're going to uh, focus on importing our own, um, our custom assets. So any drawings that we have, any backgrounds that we have. And we're going to go ahead and start setting up a little bit of a scene so that way we can start our 2D. So you have a, a brief overview of the whole setup here, right? So we talked about adding things to scenes. We talked about changing a 3D object that we have in our scene to a 2D object. And one last thing I want to show you guys is it's pretty cool. As long as this play button is going on, Right now, because I'm in the game view, nothing will happen. See, I can click on nothing will happen because that's not the, the, the structure of the game itself. But if I go here to the scene view, I could, the engine is still running. That's why you can still see the character. But as you can see, I can scroll around different areas. So if I were to select this character inside of the hierarchy, so I'm going to select the character in the hierarchy, 
and I'm going to hit W, and I drag him up. Watch what happens. See, the physics and everything still works. So even if I were to take this and drag it down like this, then drag him up. We can see that we can do a lot of things inside of the game while it's playing. On the other hand, when the game is playing and you're making all of these changes. So let's say I do something like this. Okay. So let's say I'm making all these changes and I, I'm going to move this over here a little bit and I'm going to do a whole bunch of different things. When you hit stop, all those changes go back. So you have to understand that when you're in play mode and you make any changes, you, it's not permanent. As soon as you hit stop, it all goes back. So it's just for testing purposes to see how things is working out. Uh, so always keep that in mind. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.